Introducing EMC Unified Storage Next Generation Efficiency Capabilities. This demonstration series is going to cover each one of these three new features in detail. What if you could automatically tier your storage based on simple policy settings? You could be a lot more efficient. Let's take a look at how this works. Here's Unisphere, EMC's Unified Storage Next Generation Management GUI. You can see just how easy it is to create a virtually provisioned pool. In this case, we're doing a uh, fully automated storage tiering pool, and you can see that we can actually put disks of different types into the same pool. So once that's done, it's literally that simple to create a fully automated storage tiered pool. As we create LUNs inside that pool, they'll be created automatically with the default policy of auto tiering. If we go and we create an individual LUN, here you can see that the pool is ready. Um, and you'll notice that the graphic user interface is uh, very fast based on the next generation UI built on Adobe Flex. If we take a look at the LUN UI, we're going to create some uh, new block storage devices. Uh, we're going to create them in that fully automated storage tiered um, uh, uh, storage pool. And we're going to sign, at one time, we're going to create four individual LUNs. You'll notice that uh, we can uh, automatically assign specific LUN names, or we can have LUNs assigned uh, names uh, automatically based on their LUN IDs. It's very simple and very easy. There we go. In just a few clicks, we've now created both an automated tiered uh, storage pool and four LUNs uh, inside that storage pool that are now completely automatically auto-tiering. So let's see a little bit more about how this auto-tiering actually works. If we click on that uh, uh, storage pool, you can see that we've got um, those four LUNs that we just created. And let's take a look at one of them to find a little more detail about um, its auto tiering properties. If we go to the tiering tab, you'll notice that auto tiering is the default. And it shows how the data is currently distributed between solid state, fiber channel, and SATA uh, slow spinning but very large capacity disks. You can change the default uh, policy if you'd like, but in most cases we expect that most customers will just leave it to auto tier. And if we take a look, um, you can also manage at the pool level um, what's going on in terms of the overall pool. In other words, you can see the uh, planned uh, tiering that will occur over time based on the metadata of how the actual uh, storage is being used. So for example, here it's saying 3 gigabytes worth of data is going to be moved up, 27 gigabytes of data is going to be moved down, and it's going to take roughly 0 0.07 hours uh, to complete that uh, relocation. You'll notice that you can also schedule it or you can do it on demand. Just like VMware's DRS, there's a fully automated model and there's a recommend model. Again, we expect most people will just leave it to the defaults and let it run. You'll notice that uh, uh, you can even specify the data relocation rate. So if you'd like this uh, to occur faster or slower, you can uh, change it, but once again, as you can see, we're, we're trying to make it the easy button, the easy choice. Uh, you can leave it to the default as medium for most use cases. And you can also specify a data lo uh, relocation schedule if you see fit. Again, just like VMware DRS, you can specify exactly when and how uh, relocations are going to occur based on specific windows, uh, with, including start times and finish times. Uh, simple, easy, completely automated. So this is what we mean by what if you could auto-tier based on uh, a simple policy. You've seen how simple this is. And the reality of it is, is that most customers, uh, their data sets vary over time between um, uh, very high performance requirements or very large capacity requirements. Also, notice that in Unisphere, the tiering summary is available directly on the dashboard. So the storage administrator can see all of the detail without going into any granular windows. Pause for a moment and think about how quickly and in how few clicks we just accomplished something that's incredibly sophisticated and can literally save 50 to 60 percent of the storage while delivering in some cases even better performance. What if the system could manage response times and SLAs and do it automatically, do it transparently, and do it incredibly cost effectively? Well, using EMC's unified storage platforms you can. We've added a new capability to extend the system cache uh, with flash storage technology. So this flash st uh, storage is solid state and it can easily act as both an extension to read and write cache on EMC's unified storage platforms. Now if you take a look, 
We currently don't have any fast cache, as we call this feature, enabled. So let's add some flash storage to turn on this feature. It's as simple as adding the disk to the configuration and enabling the feature. Once fast cache is enabled, um, you will see a huge system in performance impact because in effect you can add up to two terabytes of read and write cache. Uh, if you take a look, for example, this system started off with uh, you know 683 megabytes of read cache and we've added uh, basically two terabytes of, uh, fa of fast cache. Now in some use cases this can be profound. For example, in view use cases, adding just 133 uh, gigabytes worth of fast cache improve performance in a way that would be equivalent to adding 60 15K RPM disks. The next stop on our tour of efficiency technologies answers this question. What if you could just reduce your storage footprint with a single click? The answer once again is with EMC's unified storage platforms, you can. We've introduced a new capability, which is primary storage compression. Now, if we go back to our environment, recall that we created that fully automated storage tiered pool. It's basically started to fill up. So even though it's moving the data around to optimize uh, for performance and capacity, um, and we've leveraged our fast cache capability to be as efficient as we can, it's just full. So we can turn on now compression for this primary storage environment. We can change the default if you'd like about how fast uh, the compression is going to occur, and then off it goes. Now something to understand is this is very different than a zip. This is more analogous to the real-time compression that happens you know, when you're uh, videotaping something using uh, your uh, iPod and it gets stored natively in, a, in a, uh, a compressed QuickTime format as an example. Now you'll notice that we've enabled this for each one of the LUNs uh, in this uh, archive data pool and you can see uh, you can track the percentage complete if you'd like. Uh, the process occurs in the background and it uh, doesn't change any of the other features that can be used on the array. If we come back in uh, after a short amount of time has elapsed, you'll notice that the user capacity is 100 gigs and you can see the consume capacity is uh, basically around half that. You can leverage this technology in conjunction with thin provisioning. On top of thin provisioning, generally it adds about an additional 50% space savings. And you can see that our thin pool now has got a lot of free capacity to continue using storage. You can see that EMC's unified storage has delivered on the next generation of efficiency technologies for storage. We've delivered not only the capability to automatically tier so we can deal with workloads as they change, but also the ability to leverage flash technology as an extension of system cache for huge read and write cache improvements, and the ability for capacity-gated workloads to be able to compress and add an additional 50% utilization in many use cases. This is efficiency in every dimension and in every fashion. Thank you.